What if one of the minds behind ChatGPT, someone who literally built the AI revolution, told you the future isn't just powerful, but utterly unimaginable? That what's coming could change life itself, and that we might be about to lose control completely? This isn't science fiction. It's the real recent warning from Ilya Sutskever, co-creator of AlexNet, co-founder of OpenAI, and now the man behind a $30 billion AI startup focused solely on one thing, AI safety. If you've been thinking AI is just about chatbots or image filters, you're missing the bigger picture. In the next 12 minutes, we're unpacking the most important and frankly terrifying predictions you've likely never heard. And if you're not listening to this all the way through, you may be the one who's unprepared when the shift hits. Let's begin. Okay, so imagine this. You're told by one of the actual architects, one of the literal founding fathers of modern AI, that what's coming is, and I quote, extremely unpredictable and unimaginable. Hmm. And maybe even scarier, that we risk losing complete control. Yeah, it's, it's a heavy statement especially considering the sword. Exactly. This isn't some movie plot. It's a real warning from someone deep inside the field. Today, we are diving deep into the urgent insights from Ilya Sutskever. Now, he's one of the big three, you know, behind modern AI, co-created ChatGPT. That's right. Before, well, a very public and significant departure from OpenAI. A really big move in the industry. So our mission here is to really unpack his recent predictions, which are frankly pretty startling, and try to understand why this guy, whose brand new startup, by the way, is already valued at something like $30 billion, why he thinks humanity is right on the edge of its most most radical transformation ever. And crucially, what that means for you listening. Yes. What you need to get your head around, what you maybe need to do to navigate what he basically calls a technological tsunami. One that's, well, it's already hitting the shore, isn't it? It really is. Yeah. The changes are happening fast. Look, if you're still thinking AI is just, I don't know, fun chatbots making poems or those funny image generators. Yeah, the novelties. Exactly. This deep dive, we hope, will fundamentally shift how you see it. We're talking about a critical, imminent change, something that's going to redefine, well, everything, everyday life. It's a not a distant future thing anymore. Not at all. This is the conversation right now. It's shaping how we live, how we work, how we interact. It's happening today. So to really feel the weight of these warnings, we have to understand the person saying them. Before we get into what sounds, let's be honest, a bit like doomsaying, uh -huh. who is Ilya Sukskever? Why do his words matter so much? This isn't just some pundit shouting from the sidelines. No, not at all. And his background is, well, it's pretty remarkable. Mm -hmm. Not your standard path. He was clearly brilliant from a young age. I mean, he left high school when he was just 16. 16, wow. Yeah, 16. Went straight to the University of Toronto, skipped the whole end of high school thing, just dived right into higher level studies. That definitely sets someone apart. It does. And it was there in Toronto that he met Jeffrey Hinton, another huge name, one of the sort of godfathers of modern AI. Right. And working together back in 2012, they created this thing called AlexNet. AlexNet. OK. What was that? It was a neural network, a type of AI um, modeled loosely on the brain. And it basically just blew everyone away with what it could do for image recognition. It wasn't yeah. just a small step. It was like it lit the fuse for the whole deep learning explosion we see now. A real game changer then. Absolutely. Yeah. And from there, he co-founded OpenAI, you know, the company behind ChatGPT, hmm. made AI mainstream. The household name. Exactly. But then pretty dramatically in 2024, he leaves OpenAI, walks away. Which caused a lot of waves. Huge waves. And he starts his own company, focused specifically on safe superintelligence. And here's the kicker you mentioned. By 2025, so just a year later, it's valued at $30 billion. $30 billion. That's just staggering. It tells you everything. That kind of money, that fast. It means the serious investors, the people putting down huge sums, they see him as utterly credible. They believe in his vision and they take his concerns, his focus on safety extremely seriously. That valuation alone just screams urgency, doesn't it? So it really begs the question, why? Why would someone who helped birth the most famous AI on the planet, who brought it to millions, why suddenly pivot so hard to AI safety with his own venture? What shifted for him? Well, he's been pretty direct about it himself in interviews. One of the first things he said, and it really hit to you, is AI will become extremely unpredictable and unimaginable. Unpredictable and unimaginable. Okay. And when he says unpredictable, he doesn't just mean, like, it gives a weird answer sometimes. Oh, not just a glitch. No. 
He's talking about the fundamental nature of these systems as they get more powerful, as they scale up. And remember, this is the guy who co-created Alex Net, who is chief scientist at OpenAI. He knows the guts of these systems like almost no one else. So when he says it's unpredictable... You listen. You lean in. It's not a casual remark. And this seems to be where his thinking gets really critical. He's not painting some picture 50 years down the line. He's essentially saying that the speed of development right now, it's taking us straight towards what people call the singularity point. Right. And connecting that idea, the singularity... It's that theoretical moment, maybe not so theoretical anymore, where AI gets smart enough to start improving itself. Okay, explain that a bit more. Yeah, imagine an AI that doesn't just run its code. It understands its own code mm -hmm. deeply. And then it starts rewriting it, optimizing mm -hmm. it, making itself better, smarter, faster. And it does this way faster than any human team could. So it creates version 2.0 of itself, yeah. which is inherently more capable. And that version 2.0 then designs version 3.0 and 4.0, it's this runaway loop, a self-fueling spiral of intelligence increase. That's an intelligence explosion. Exactly. That's the term. Like an avalanche, he said, that just gets bigger and faster the further it goes. And the implication is this could accelerate so incredibly quickly, become so complex. No, we just can't keep up. We literally couldn't. It would be impossible for humans to fully grasp what's happening inside these systems, let alone control them or even predict their next move. It's the ultimate black box problem but potentially on a civilization-altering scale. What I find so striking listening to him is this, this duality. He talks about the most incredible possibilities, like wild optimism, mm -hmm. but then delivers these really brutal warnings almost in the same breath. It's quite a paradox. It really is. Yeah. And the optimistic side is, well, it's dizzying. He talks about AI getting capable enough to revolutionize healthcare. Imagine curing diseases we currently struggle with, maybe extending human lifespans dramatically. Well, how long are we talking? He speculates, you know, 100, 120, maybe 150, even 200 years potentially. Curing cancers in days, fixing genetic disorders at the root. That sounds like science fiction. It does. But he also talks about AI solving these incredibly complex problems in biology, math, physics equations that have stumped the best human minds for decades or things we can't even conceive of tackling now. The potential for AGI, artificial general intelligence, is just... Yeah. You know, Vertiginous is a good word for it. Okay, so that's the dream scenario, but then... But then comes the flip side, the brutal warning yeah. that this exact same power, this incredible capability could totally slip out of our control. How does he frame that risk? He uses this analogy like AI is akin to learning to manipulate a fundamental force of nature. Think electricity or nuclear power. It can light up a city, bring untold benefits, or it can level it. If it's not controlled... If it's not aligned carefully with mm -hmm. what humans actually want and value, the destructive potential is just as immense as the constructive potential. Our ability to steer it, he implies, is absolutely paramount. So the tension is, it's not if this intelligence explosion happens, according to him, but it's how we stay in the driver's seat. Or even relevant, mm -hmm. when AI might become vastly more intelligent than us. That's the heart of it. How do we manage something that could potentially surpass us by, as he puts it, several orders of magnitude. It's a challenge unlike anything humanity has ever faced. Which brings us back to the listener. Okay, this sounds huge, potentially scary, potentially amazing, but what does this actually mean for you, for your job, your kids' education, your daily life? We can't just sit back and watch this happen, right? Absolutely not. And the reality is this transformation is going to touch literally every part of our lives. How we work, definitely. How we age, how we learn, how we interact everything. And are people getting it? Is there enough awareness? That's a concern he raises. That a lot of humanity, maybe most people, aren't really conscious yet of the sheer scale of what's unfolding. He gives examples like, you know, you might talk to someone in a traditional field, say real estate. Okay. And they might see AI as just another tool, maybe something for marketing, but not this fundamental existential shift. But at the same time, in other areas, you have people and companies already using AI so effectively that they're pulling way ahead. They're basically monopolizing fields, creating these huge imbalances because they're leveraging this power and others aren't or can't. Imagine a small business using AI for everything, customer service, market analysis, product design, instantly competing with huge corporations. The gap just widened incredibly fast. So we're really not just talking about a slightly smarter phone assistant or, you know, a better self-driving car anymore. Not even close. This is about a fundamental overhaul of what it means to be human, living in a world where AI might be better than us at, well, almost everything cognitive. It sounds dramatic, but let's make it concrete. Think about your life, say, 
five years from now. Maybe your main doctor is an AI. An AI doctor. Yeah, an AI that has access to all your real-time health data, knows your body's patterns better than any human possibly could, predicts issues before they happen. Okay, that's potentially amazing, but also a bit unnerving. Exactly. Or think about education. Your child's teacher. Maybe it's an AI system perfectly tuned to their specific way of learning, designing personalized lessons that make learning almost effortless. Tailored education on a massive scale. Right, or your financial advisor. Oh. An AI crunching millions of economic variables constantly, making investment decisions with speed and insight no human could match. Sutskiver even hints that the whole idea of our economy might need a fundamental rethink because of AI's capabilities. Wow, okay. This really underlines why Sutskiver's message feels so urgent. He's basically forcing us, or trying to force us, to ask these really big, really hard questions right now. Precisely. And that brings us to the core questions for you, listening. Do we really want to hand over so many critical decisions about our health, our money, our children's future, to systems that we understand less and less? Systems that are evolving faster than we can track? Or is there another path? Or can we make the effort? collectively to understand them better, to ensure they stay as tools that help us that augment our lives, rather than systems that potentially dominate or sideline us. The sheer amount of money pouring into AI, it's unprecedented. That $30 billion valuation for Sutskiver's one-year-old company. Yeah, you keep coming back to that. Because it's such a powerful signal. The smartest money in the world has understood the stakes. They see the potential, yes, but they also see the absolute necessity of getting the safety part right. And that leads right into what feels like Sutskiver's central challenge to every single person listening. He essentially asks, what are you doing right now to prepare for a world where AI redefines what it means to be alive? It's a direct challenge. It really is. And his point is, this isn't some abstract philosophical debate or, you know, science fiction for the future. This is tomorrow's reality being built today, right now. Even if there's like inertia in some places, maybe people are slow to wake up to it. Hmm. The change is already happening profoundly in other areas, in leading countries. It's truly just a matter of time before it touches everyone everywhere. The wave isn't just coming, we're already in it. Absolutely, the tide is here. So wrapping this up, what we've explored today, drawing heavily on Ilya Sutskiver's perspective, it paints this incredibly stark picture of AI's future dual-edged, isn't it? Very much so. On one side, potential beyond our wildest dreams, curing diseases, maybe solving climate change, unlocking cosmic mysteries, massively extended lifespans. Unimaginable benefits. Truly. Yeah. But on the other side, this immense risk, this power that, if we fumble it, could become uncontrollable, could slip right through our fingers with potentially devastating consequences. The urgency really comes through, the need to understand, to adapt, to engage actively with what's happening. It couldn't be clearer. And it leaves us with a really profound question, I think. Go on. Well, given this potential for exponential self-improving AI, this intelligence explosion we talked about, something that could genuinely surpass our ability to even comprehend it, what's left for us, what parts of being human, our purpose, our creativity, maybe even consciousness itself, right. what, if anything, remains uniquely ours in that future? That's, yeah... That's a heavy question to sit with, a challenge to really think about what makes us human and how we thrive alongside something so powerful. Mm. The world's definitely changing at lightning speed. It's really up to all of us, isn't it, to grapple with these implications. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. Okay. If you made it this far, you're not just curious, you care. This is just the beginning. AI is moving fast. And if you want to stay ahead of the curve, we've got regular insights, expert breakdowns, and honest conversations, all in under 30 minutes. So go ahead. Hit subscribe. The future of work won't wait, and neither should you. If you